Hi, this is Todd Geist with Geist Interactive, and today I want to take a look at virtual script triggers. Virtual script triggers is something that I talked about and kind of um, demoed at my FileMaker DevCon presentation last month in, in San Antonio. But it's kind of an advanced topic, and I had to move through it pretty quickly. It was near the end of my presentation. So I wanted to take another opportunity to go through it in a little more detail and to show um, uh, some both simpler and more advanced uses of virtual script triggers. So the first thing, just some background. Um, regular script triggers, we know what these are. These are the, the hooks that FileMaker gives us to run scripts when certain things happen uh, in, in FileMaker. So for example, when a file opens, when the first window of a file opens, you can attach a script to that and it will run when that, when that window opens. And that's the on first window open uh, uh, script trigger. There's also script triggers for things like record committing or record loading, entering a layout, leaving a layout, keyboard um, keystrokes. There's a whole bunch of script triggers that FileMaker gives us. Uh, but a virtual script trigger is something that, uh, that gets fired when we want it to. So regular script triggers get fired when FileMaker decides based on, on those events. A virtual script trigger is a script trigger that we can create that fires whenever we want it to fire, uh, usually in response to some script action. Um, and the reason for doing that is because it gives us another way to hook into modular code. So when we design a feature, we want to keep the core code of that feature encapsulated and tight, and we don't want to modify that every time that we want to use that feature. We're going to see an example of that in just a minute. So. Um, so when we're building a feature, we might want to say, hey, when we're done with this picker or with this slider, or with this wizard, uh, let's run a script at the end of that process. But we don't want to hard code that, whatever script that is, into the core of the, of the module code. We want it to be able to be assignable whenever we use that module. And uh, so that's what we're going to look at right here in the demo. Okay, so um, in this demo, we're going to take a look at using virtual script triggers along with uh, a modular FileMaker module called uh, MonthPicker2. And this is available on the modularfilemaker.org site, and we'll have some links to that in, in the blog post that accompanies this video. But so let's take a look at the, at the demo file. We'll look, at, we'll look at it in the MonthPicker2 example, and then we'll look at a simple example so we can kind of just um, tear it apart and look at, look at things in detail. So um, month picker, well, a month picker is this, right? It get, lets us select a date um, in a popover. And the reason for doing this in a popover as opposed to using the uh, dropdown that comes with FileMaker, the native dropdown that you can assign to a field, is this one is stylable, so I can change the style to look however I want it to look. And um, it also has, has some more functionality, which we'll get into in just a minute. So the code for the module is um, encapsulated in, we have our mo modular FileMaker modules folder, and here's our month picker folder. So all of the core code for the scripts, uh, most, of the, most of the functionality is in scripts, and it's all in one folder. And then uh, modular, the uh, month picker module includes, uh, it also has a, uh, a table called month picker with one global field in it that we need. And um, then it has this popover that contains all of the UI code. Um, and you can see that we have two instances of the month picker uh, here on the layout. And they are using the same scripts, but you can see that they're uh, actually operating on different fields. So this one is operating on my, on my start date field, and this one's operating on my end date field. And uh, so we've configured this popover here to work with this field and this popover here to work with this field. But we've also used virtual script triggers to add a little bit more functionality. So what we've got is a validation that um, we can add to this script trigger, or to this uh, module. Let's say that in this case, we don't want to let the user choose a uh, an end date that is before the start date. So if I select something that is in September, like the first, it's going to give me uh, an error dialog, and it won't let me won't let me select that. So, but um, this other month picker, which is using the exact same code, just to, just doesn't have the validation in it, um, doesn't have that problem. So I can't I don't have that validation running here. 
so I can pick different fields and it, there isn't an issue. So, so the, the basic problem that a virtual trigger solves here is that I want to be able to provide different validation scripts for each of these two, for each of these two instances of the same module and I want to do it without modifying the core code that comes with the module. So uh, this is how we do it. So if we look at, if we put, pull up the popover, I've got these two orange buttons here. And this button is, runs a validate. This one is called validate, and this one is called before close. This button has a script trigger assigned to it, and it has on start date validate on it. And if we look at, in the other case, over here, the same button, well, it's not the same button, but it's the same, has the same, uh, it, it, it serves the same role, has a script trigger that is on end date validate. So these two different, so these two popovers are different only in the script triggers that are tied um, to these buttons here. Uh, and also in the field that they're tied to. But as far as for validation for our script trigger purposes, we have a we have a virtual script trigger that runs on validate, and we have a virtual script trigger that runs um, just before the the date picker closes or the month picker closes. And so how that works really, it's really there's a lot of little details to it, but the basic idea is that in our month in our month picker module code, somewhere in those scripts, when when the button is pressed and we select an event. We go to that to this object using go to object script name, and that triggers this script to run. So when we click a button here to select a date on this popover, the script trigger associated with this button runs. But when we do it over here, the script trigger, the script that's tied to this script trigger runs. So it's a different script. So this gives us a place to tie two different scripts to the same code basically um, and that's how it works so we've got it we've got one so we, like I said we have one running for this validate here if we select that we won't be able to the other thing we have going on is on this on this pop over here if you select a date that is after this date it's going to uh, adjust the end date based on the on the original interview uh, interval so if I go and move something up to say no, October, um, let's do 10th, you'll see that the, the date here changed. Uh, and so that is using the virtual script trigger that is associated, uh, sorry, uh, the script which is tied to this button here as a script, as a script trigger on object enter on start date close. So, um, so what we have here with this month picker is there are two places in the modular code that I wanted to expose script triggers. I wanted to allow the person using my module a place to hook in their own scripts to do validation or to run on close. And uh, so we use virtual script triggers to do that. Uh, and it's basically just using a go to object script trigger to make that all happen under the hood. Okay, so um, you can download this file and you can dig into that last, into that last example and, and pull it apart and see how it works. But it's a little bit more complicated um, than what I want to show now because I want to just kind of show something very simple so we can see how it works under the hood. So we're going to look at this simple example down here. The first thing that's interesting is that your on object, um, your buttons can be hidden and they still will function just fine. You can still target them with the go to object, um, object script step and it will still fire the script trigger that is associated with it. So uh, you can have a script, you can have a button anywhere on the layout hidden, or you can put it off screen. Doesn't really matter. Um, this guy has a on object enter call um, script trigger, and it's running a script called uh, on object enter virtual trigger. And we're passing a single dollar sign uh, variable just called parameter, and we'll see why that is in just a minute. So I've got a script that is going to run that, or is going to fire that. So let's run that with uh, script debugger and just see, see how that goes. All right, so, um, oh, you know what, before I do that, let me drop, let me, let me go back here and talk about two other things on the layout I forgot. So one thing is we, have, we should show the object name. 
So this guy has an object name of virtual trigger object. And we have another object off the screen here, which is just a text field called a uh, text label called empty object. And we need both of those guys. So I wanted to make sure we show those before we do the before we step through the script. So uh, all right, so let's run that script. Uh, let's run it with script debugger. So there's the script. So the first thing it does is it sets that variable parameter to just a val value foo. I just want to demonstrate that we can pass a parameter into our virtual script trigger. Um, so the first thing we do is we go to an object, empty object. And that was that one that was off screen down here in the bottom right. And the reason we do that is because there's a possibility that you might already be on this object. If you've already run this, 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 uh, this script and, you, and you've gone to that object, you may not have left that object, so you may still be on it. So we want to make sure that the first thing we do is leave our script triggered object. We go to this one that has no script triggers. And the next thing we do is we go to that object that actually has a script trigger on it. And we'll see what happens when we do that. So right here, when we do this, we're going to run another script. So now our on object enter script trigger is fired. We can see that up here. And when we run this first step, it's going to show there is our, um, it says the virtual script trigger fired by a script with the parameter foo. So we passed in the script parameter into the script. And you can see that down here, foo. And the reason we did is because when this trigger fired, the other script, this script here was running and it had a variable single dollar sign parameter. So when the script was triggered, the single dollar sign parameter of the script local variable was populated. And so therefore it was handed off in the script trigger through the, through the uh, script parameter that we had set up um, in, the, in the script trigger itself. So, um, so that's, one, that's a way that you can actually pass in uh, parameters into your virtual script trigger. Now, um, we're setting a, just a result yay to a double dollar sign variable, and we'll see why that is in a minute. There's the variable set to yay. Um, the, the basic reason is that uh, you will not be able to get the results of this script back into the script that called it in the first place. So doing this, like I'm showing here with the exit script result, double dollar sign script result, this won't work. Or, It'll set it, but we won't be able to retrieve it. So when we get here, um, you'll see that I've got a variable set to result, and it says get script result, and you'll be able to see that it won't actually work. So when we, we run that, there's no result there. It still isn't there. But, so, but we can get the result simply by grabbing our, our script result, which we do there. And now when we run our show custom dialog, we'll get, we'll get yay. So what this demonstrates is let me show that script. We'll bring it up here. We can pass. Um, so basically, we, we can fire a script based on a script trigger, this virtual script concept, anywhere we want within another script by using a go to object script step. We can pass it parameters by simply making sure that the uh, we populate a variable um, and we set that variable here. And that will be passed in when the script is fired by our script. Interestingly, it won't be passed in if that script happens to be fired by any other script that doesn't have, doesn't have parameter declared, which is kind of interesting and useful in some cases. So uh, this will fire our script. Um, and then the other thing to note is that we can't get script results back. So if you want to save results in your, in your triggered script, your virtual trigger script, and read them, in the script that called it, you're going to have to use a double dollar sign variable or some other method to get that, that result back into the script that triggered your virtual script trigger in the first place. Uh, okay, well that covers it. Um, yeah, so that's a simple example of using, uh, using a virtual trigger and a much more complex example of using a virtual, virtual script trigger. All right, so that was a look at virtual script triggers. And just to recap, um, these are triggers that fire when you want them to, not when FileMaker wants them to. Uh, to do that, you use go to object script steps to fire the script triggers that are attached to those objects. And it helps you keep your code modular. Uh, and you can uh, configure your modules or your features without having to modify the core code. All right, that's it. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.